Hi everyone and welcome! I'm V Muse, the Crafting Muse, and in today's tutorial for WizKids Take and Paint, I'm going to be showing you how to paint the D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures Death Slad and Grey Slad Minis. I'm very much looking forward to going through this process with you. If you're new to painting, don't worry. I'm taking this as a step-by-step, -step, giving you tips as we go along the way. The first thing we want to do though is take a look at the supplies and the paints that we want to have on hand for this. The supplies are pretty straightforward for this project. You want to make sure you have a paper plate to act as a paint palette for you, as well as some paper towels. I always recommend two to three. Make sure you have various sized paint brushes, including a very fine pointed tip, a large flat, and a small flat brush, and then just some standard round brushes. You'll also want two cups of water. This is not measurement, this is two separate cups of water, and in each of them put a small touch of dish soap. This is going to help you with rinsing your brushes, and the other one is going to help you with thinning your paints. I also always recommend newspaper or something to protect your table surface. I'll be using Vallejo paints in this tutorial. That does not mean that you have to. You are more than welcome to use what is available to you at home. I'm using paints from both the model as well as the game lines. First up, there is black, which is just a classic black, bone white, which falls into an ivory category, beastie brown, which is a warm medium brown color, terracotta, that's a nice dark brick red, somber gray is a dark cool gray, cold gray is a medium neutral gray, stonewall gray is a light warm gray, tinny tin is a dark metallic copper, polished gold, a bright yellow metallic gold, and finally the black wash. These two minis both come pre-primed, so you will not need to worry about that particular step. This is a great and helpful feature of WizKids Unpainted Miniatures. The only other bit of prep you may need or wish to do is to remove the mold lines from your minis. I find this particular style of tool quite helpful, and it's just a matter of letting it glide over the areas where you wish to reduce the height of the mold line. You can also use files as well as other specialty tools made especially for mold line remover on miniatures. Once you are satisfied, you need only take a large dry clean brush and sweep away the debris left over. If you do not have these tools on hand, that is perfectly okay and something to consider for future projects. Remember, it's a three foot rule for when your mini is on the table. These lines will not be as obvious, but when it's up in front of your face, yeah, you're gonna notice them, but that's okay. For both these minis, you'll want to use somber gray as the base color or a dark cool tone gray, meaning that the gray looks more blue than brown. Using water for thinning paints, thin the paint down so it's the consistency of heavy cream or maple syrup. Usually a few drops is enough. Once mixed in with the paint, apply it to the mini, making sure to get into all the little details. Start first with the death slad, the hunched over one. You may find you need to poke and prod the brush into some of the areas to really get into where the paint needs to go. Once you are done with that mini, then move over to the gray slab. If you get paint on the base, that's okay, but you don't need to worry about painting that with the gray as well. We'll get to that later on. Don't forget to rinse that brush in your rinse cup, not the thinning water cup. You wanna keep that thinning water cup clean. The rinsing cup is where you can rinse all your brushes. Your mini should be well covered and look something like this. If you notice any spots as they dry, then you can always go back in and touch up those areas. It happens. This tutorial is gonna work off of an assembly line process. We have two minis to work with, the death slide, which is the hunched over one, and the gray slide, who looks like, you know, could fly away or do the chicken dance. And what we're gonna do is work the same color paint, but on different areas of each of the miniatures. So do keep an ear out for when I say work with this one or work with that one. I'm factoring in paint time and I'm also factoring in dry time. So please make a point to pick up the mini I'm saying to do first, so that way you'll be able to keep up with the process that we're gonna go through for this entire tutorial. I want to take a minute and explain this concept of overbrushing to you. If you're new to miniature painting, you may not have heard of this before, or you may have heard of its distant cousin, dry brushing, which we're also going to do, but that's later. With overbrushing, all you are doing is dipping your paintbrush into the paint, blotting it off on a paper towel, and then you are dragging the paint that is on the brush over the surface of your miniature. The difference here is that you are actually applying the paint in a heavier coverage than you would with dry brushing. You want this color to sort of overtake the higher layers of the miniature details. So by the time you're done, what happens is you're doing an overlay of the paint color and allowing the original base color to show through where the indentations and the grooves and the details are deeper on the miniature. That's essentially what overbrushing is. Let's take a look at it. 
Now going in with cold gray, which is a medium gray tone and a small flat brush, you'll add a layer of this gray over the base color gray. Again, it's a bit heavier of an application, but you're not looking to fully cover the mini. You want this color to float over the details, leaving the grooves and indentations untouched for the most part. It will be a subtle difference of color graduation, but when the time comes, it will make all the difference in the tones between the death and the gray slad. It will also help to pull the brush from the bottom of the mini up across the details as much as you can, or be sure to run the brush across the grain of the details, not with the lines of them. Otherwise you'll find it will have the paint go into the places where you don't really necessarily want it to go. When done, be sure to rinse this paintbrush in your rinse cup water. This is what your death slot should look like at this time. Not to worry if some of the cold gray found its way into the grooves and indentations. There will be a wash later on to help bring those back out. But as you can see here, the cold gray floating on the surface of the mini and the somber gray left in the deeper areas. It helps start bringing out the details. Using the same cold gray thinned out a bit this time, go in with a fine point round brush and paint the wings of the gray slot. Don't worry about the bony protrusions in the wings as we will address that soon enough. You wanna be sure to cover both the front and the back as well as those edges of the wings because those can kind of sneak by you if you aren't careful. Let's talk about mixing paints when you're aiming for a lighter or a darker color to work with. It's very easy to think, oh, I'm just going to add white to this color and I'll get the effect I want, which is true. However, if you're trying to work for something that is a lighter color, you'll find it's easier to start with the lighter color, like say white and then adding in red to get your pink, than it is trying to add the white into red and it's going to need a lot more paint and a lot more additional paint until you get to that pink that you want. So essentially what we're going to be doing today is aiming for a charcoal gray. And to do this, it is a better approach to start first with the black and then adding in the somber gray to lighten the tone of the black. This is so that you're not taking the somber gray and adding in black, adding in black, adding in black. You always wanna be aware when you're trying to lighten or darken a paint color, where you wanna be on that scale. If you're gonna go for a lighter color, you actually wanna start with your lighter paint and add the darker paint into it. If you're gonna go for a darker color, you start with the darker paint and add the lighter color into it. So let's get started with mixing our colors together and again, aim for that charcoal gray. Mixing the two colors together and also thinning them with a few drops of water, you're aiming for a charcoal gray. Starting with the dust slot, begin to paint the spikes and plates sticking out of its back and shoulders. You'll find it helps to rotate around and get into the various angles where you need to paint these different spines and plates with a fine point round brush. Then you can move on to the claws on its hands and feet. Once he's done, move over to the gray slot and address the spikes and claws on that. Once you get those taken care of, now is the time to address those bony protrusions on the wings. Again, fine point brush here and just put a little line of that charcoal along the bony protrusions. Don't forget you have the front and the back of the wings to address with this miniature. If you should slip, that's actually okay. Just be sure to let this paint dry before going back and touching it up with the cold gray. If you try to touch it up before it dries, you're just gonna be mixing paint on your miniature. So always let that dry before you do your touch up. We're getting to a point in the process where now is a great time to take a break. You want these minis to dry a little bit. You also wanna give yourself a chance to get up and move around. I highly recommend getting something to drink, having a snack. If you're looking for something to do, you could rinse off your brushes a little bit more and make sure they're ready for the next few rounds. It's very easy when you get into miniature painting to sit there for hours on end, not move, high guilty as charged, and then you're kind of regretting it later because your body is very stiff. So stretch, get up, get the blood flowing, and I'll see you in about five to 10 minutes. At this point, your minis should be dry, and now we can move on to painting their bases. While the death slot is shown in this section, I do highly recommend you start with the gray slot so that they will both be dry for the next step. Using Beastie Brown, which is a warm mid-brown, carefully paint around the base of this mini. You'll want to use a round point brush for this part. A smaller fine point will be helpful around the edges where the feet meet up with the base itself. 
Don't forget to also paint around the edge of the base as you go around, and your mini should be dry enough that you can handle its upper body so that you can paint the base more easily. After you take care of the gray slot, then move on to the dust slot. At this point, this is what your mini should look like. We're going to shift over to the gray slot as our starting mini now, so let's get moving on the next step. Okay, now we've come to that part that I said we would, and that is dry brushing. You've done the overbrushing, you've gotten a feel for that, hopefully. Dry brushing, like I said, is a distant cousin. This means that what you wanna do instead of doing the overbrushing where there was a little bit more paint on the brush, you actually want to blot the paint off the brush so it's almost dry, hence the name. You know you have the right amount of paint on your paintbrush if you go to your wrist and draw the paint across and you still see all the details and the textures of your skin, but you've changed the tone of your skin faintly to the color that's on the brush. That honestly is the biggest tip I will always give new painters or any seasoned painters, honestly, because I find that this mimics what the plastic will do on the miniature. So if you are new to dry brushing, what I want you to do is dip that paintbrush into your paint, blot it off on a paper towel, and then do a test run on one of your wrists. If you can see all the lines and the grooves still showing through, but have a hint of that color on your wrist, you've done it just fine. If you go and you put it on and your wrist has now changed to that color of the paint and you cannot see a difference between the indentations in your skin, that means there's too much paint on the brush. Blot off more of that paint and try again. So that's basically what dry brushing is. You are highlighting the upper surfaces of the details on the miniature. You're not looking to completely change the color of the mini. You want it to act more as like a nod to the color instead. Let's get going, you can see it in action. Going in with Stonewall Gray, we are going to dry brush the gray slad first. Again, with a small flat brush, sweep the blotted brush up and across the details of the slad. Very much like what was done with the dust slad and our overbrushing, but with a lighter hand and more gradual coverage. You will do this over its entire body and all the features as well as the base. This is going to show all the texture that is in this miniature. The gray slot is technically a lighter gray than the dust slot, which is why we skip the cold gray process on this mini. We want the stone wall to pop out just a little bit more. After you take care of the gray slot, now you can move on over to the dust slot and do the same, but be sure to go more lightly with this color. You want it to just highlight the features and not cover it as completely as you did before with the overbrushing. At this point, we're focusing on those last finishing details before we get to our final technique. With Tinny Tin, which is a dark metallic copper and a fine point brush, go in and paint the bands around the arms of the gray slot. You'll want to do your best to get around the edges of the bands as well. Slow and steady is the best, and remember you can always hold your mini close for better stability. With polished gold and the small flat brush, go in and dry brush a bit of this over the area where you just applied tinny tin on the gray slot. Keep your sweeping motions more controlled and on the armbands. You don't want this going on the rest of his body. After you do that, move back to a fine point round brush and put the same gold into the eyes. This can be tricky, so I do recommend putting a very tiny dot of paint at the tip of your brush and then carefully dotting the eye of each slot. The bead of paint helps make it easier to place and feel free to test run this on a bit of paper towel or even the back of your hand. First, we need to get a bit of color onto the gray slot's mouth. For this, I'm using terracotta, which is a nice rich red brown. Taking your fine point brush, which obviously you should have been rinsing at this point, go in and thin the paint a little bit to apply it to the inside of the mouth. Once you have that filled in, rinse the brush, because trust me with reds, definitely rinse, and place him to the side. Using that same brush, you're gonna go in now with bone white and pick up the death slot. This time we're gonna start working on his teeth by doing a nice sweeping motion of the tip of the brush across the texture of the teeth. 
Think of this as sort of a more smaller version of dry brushing. You're not doing as drastic of a sweep, but you do still want the bristles of the brush to float across the top of the teeth and not get into the grooves. You can also dab off any excess paint on the side of your thumb before moving into where you want to paint it. This is something I do often. As long as the gray slad's mouth is dry, you can then go in and get its teeth also with the bone white. Once again, you want to give your minis a chance to dry, so do be sure to set this aside, get up, move around, get another snack if you want to, but drying is an important step to this process. We'll get back to things in another 5 to 10 minutes. Going in with a black wash and a large round brush, start with the death slot and apply the wash to it. It helps to start at the top and work the wash down the body of the miniature. This is a full head to toe cover, including the base itself. Be sure to keep moving the wash around as you apply it to address any pooling that might start as it settles into the details. If you have too much wash, simply blot the brush on a piece of paper towel, then stick the brush you're using into the puddle and it'll actually wick away the excess wash for you. After the death slot is done, use the same wash, but this time you're going to go back to that thinning water and thin the wash out just a little bit. Then you're going to apply this diluted wash to the gray slot. This will help keep it a slightly lighter color and show off the difference between the gray and the death slot. Both of these are absolutely going to need to dry completely before doing anything else with them though. At this point, you're pretty much done with painting your two slats. There's just a couple things left to do. The first step, let them dry. Please, please let them dry. If you handle them too soon, then you're going to start pulling the wash away from the surface, and that's not such a great result. So once those are completely dry, you can then go in and seal your miniatures using any type of sealer you may have at home. Vallejo does have a line of them as well. I definitely recommend for these fellows that you use a matte variety. The other thing you'll want to do once that seal coat is dry is put them onto those little brown black discs that come in the packaging. To do so, just use any type of brand super glue style paint, but make sure it is in liquid form and not gel. Why not gel? Because it is brittle, it leaves this foggy residue, and I don't find the bond as strong as traditional liquid. That's why. That being said, thank you so much to our host or hostess for doing this for us. Uh, we at WizKids hope you had a great time with this, and once again, thank you for joining me for the D&D Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures Death Slad and Gray Slad Take and Paint tutorial. I would love to see what you have produced after doing this, so please be sure to get onto socials and tag us at WizKidsGames and use that hashtag WK Take Letter N Paint. I'm looking forward to it, and I'll see you on the flip side on social media as the Crafting Muse pretty much anywhere. Until then, be safe everyone, and take care.